Hi, this is David Julian, and I'd like to give you a tutorial on adding your copyright to photos in Adobe Lightroom. It's becoming increasingly important to keep your copyright and your name visible on the images that you upload to social media, that you submit to competitions, or that you post anywhere outside of your own working environment. It's important to be able to also add this as invisible photo metadata that travels with your files wherever they go and it's also important for it to be visible on the actual exported photos that you use online. So we're going to cover two different ways of doing this in Adobe Lightroom. Here we are in Adobe Lightroom and uh, I'm in the library interface right now but let's simulate a situation that all photographers using Lightroom encounter and that is when you're importing images for the first time there's an opportunity to add your copyright metadata to the images as they're being imported which saves you a lot of time later so the first thing I want to do is go into the import dialog I'm going to go to import photos and video from the file menu some of you may have this happen automatically when you insert a card into your computer because you've told Lightroom to handle incoming cards that way. So I'm just going to grab any amount of these images here. And it's not important which images I use. I'm going to actually just be applying the copyright to all images here. So you'll notice over here, of course, you've got your image source selected. This is the card that's plugged into my laptop. And over on this side, you've got destination and file handling. Now, the important thing here is this is the portion here, apply during import. So always make sure apply during import is something that you pay attention to as you import new images. And this is the portion here where you get to apply a metadata copyright. That means that it's going to be information that's embedded in the data within the file itself. We go down here and I've already made a basic copyright that I call basic copyright all data and no address. Let's go take a look and see how to do this. Here's, I'm going to click new and Lightroom brings up an interface that might be a little scary at first. There's a lot of information there, but all it is is a place where you can set up a preset so that every time you import your images, you can select that preset or it'll be selected for you automatically because Lightroom always uses the last state of your import and you can put in whatever data you'd like. My way of handling it is I put in the copyright that I want to read in my images. So it would be my name, David Julian. Copyright status, this is key. They even light it up in red for you in some cases. You'll see it that way. You want to put copyrighted. Now, if you are creating images that you want to be used in the public domain, then you would put public domain and for a lot of places that for instance even in Google image search that will set your images apart so I want mine to be copyrighted and rights usage terms now this is a very personal thing but I think typing all rights reserved is one way of handling kind of a blanket statement that you want your images basically protected all rights reserved gotta make sure it's spelled right and if you happen to have a place on your website or another website where you want people who potentially might want to use your image to read about the information, how you deal with copyright, how to get in touch with you, what it means to be copyrighted, this would be where you type in the URL beginning with HTTP colon slash slash. Um, for now, at least, that's what we have to do. And you could put the URL or the web address for that page. I'm going to uncheck that because we're not going to be embedding any feature like that right now. So anything that's checked off here is going to be embedded in your image. Anything that's unchecked will not be. Now, here you can put anything you want. Um, as I may move someday, I'm not going to put an address, but I do come from the United States and that's where I'll be based. So I put United States which also clues your recipient of your image in that this is the copyright location of the copyright law. Now, your phone may be something that you feel you're going to have pretty much from now until you retire, so you could put your phone number there. Um, I'm just going to type in a fake number here because I'm online. 
and make sure you always have your um, your area code in here but email is something that we pretty much can assume we're going to have some version of for the near future at least so I'm going to type in my email address make sure you get the at symbol and here my computer is automatically trying to type one in I'm going to put in my email address and that's my real one and my website is I'm going to cheat and copy this that is my website if I include the full URL then I know that this will be a clickable link in the metadata of my images if it's ever called up that way and creator job title you can put photographer intellectual genre I mean this is all these are all things you can put in or you can ignore them it's up to you it's awful lot of information here but keep it simple at least the first time you do this make it simple for yourself and now the most important thing is to title this preset because if we create it we're going to title it so you can title it up here I'm gonna call this DJ basic copy right no address you can call it anything you want I'm going to click create now that copyright shows up here I've got one that I would created before and this is the one that I just created you can have as many different versions of your copyright as you want and if you're doing work for a client and you're processing or you're working on their images for whatever reason you could also create a preset for them so you can have as many different presets as you like and every time you import your images there'll be a drop-down list of the preset here um, this happens to be also a place where I apply global keywords that if that are true to all of the images so in this case these images were all taken in Seattle Center so I know oops there we go to keep in mind that if you've got a lot of images and they're not all from the same location they're not all yours you can also put your name here and that will embed your name in the keywords as well which can be a good retrieval system for finding your images versus other people's images if you have a large collection so that's about it that's all you have to do to uh, begin your import if I click import now uh, these will all import with that information so I'm just going to do this I'm going to uncheck all but one just so we can see how this works and uh, uh, now I'm going to hit import and it's going to bring this image in and if I look at the metadata that results from looking at the images uh, now that it's in Lightroom I can see here that this is the exact information that I put in when I created that copyright metadata setting here it is status is copyrighted there's the copyright that's what it says um, on the fly if you're if you've done this to many images and you decide that you're going to release one for public domain all you'd have to do is select that and now that image would be keyed for public domain but this is generally how this all works okay now we're going to go to the next portion of this which is what do you do when you want to embed a visible copyright on images that you export I'm going to go to a different image and I'm going to select one here I'll grab this image here this is a photo of this year's Burning Man and I'm going to pretend that my need is to export this image to upload to social media but I want to have my copyright visible in the image so here's what I do I go to export because this is how I get images to leave Lightroom export and this is where I would put where the image is going to go this is where I would put anything that I'm going to rename the image but I'm not going to rename this image so I'll uncheck that this is where I specify the image format the color space and if it's going online I always export to JPEG to sRGB because that's a more universally understood color uh, color space for online use um, I always want a decent quality but it doesn't have to be highest highest end if it's going online in fact my feeling is that if we're 
uploading images to online resources such as Facebook or uh, or, or any social media. I don't really want <laughs> super high quality images up online in those venues because I have no idea what they're going to do with the images. So that's how I treat it here. This is a size that I limit my images to for social media work, sharpening, whatever. But this is where you want to put in what it is you want to happen here. So you can have all metadata stay in and that's everything including the camera you use, the lens you used. Um, you can just have copyright only or you can have copyright and contact info. This has nothing to do with the visible copyright information. This is just metadata. This is the place here where you watermark the image. This is where you actually leave a physical impression on the image. So I have many different watermarks here. Some of these are just simply from demos I've done. But as you can see, they have a key system to them. They tell you what the copyright uh, watermark will look like and they tell you a little bit about it. in this case it's black so if I want to see what this will look like on my exported images there's a little bit of a trick Lightroom doesn't give you a preview of a sample image that shows you what it's going to look like as you're exporting it which I think they really should do but what we can do is go to edit watermarks down at the very bottom of the list and then it brings up a dialogue where we can see our copyright begins with whatever photo you've selected for export. If you've got many photos selected for export, you can scroll through them here. But look what we're noticing is that my black copyright 2015 David Julian is not going to work on this image. So I dial in one of my white ones, white centered. Uh, here's one here. And here's one that's designed to be used on darker images and as you can see it crosses over this area here so we can actually move that copyright over we can change its opacity to be very very visible or very very subtle I recommend that you make them very visible and if this means exporting your dark images first with a light copyright and then exporting your light images with a dark copyright then so be it that's what you need to do if you want to be a professional and you want to make sure that your images are visible and that your brand is recognizable and that your name is associated with your images, this is what you do. So get to know this interface. You can create text-based copyrights by uh, typing in text here. This one's a graphical copyright that I made in Photoshop. Let's look at a text-based copyright so we can see what those really look like. This is a text-based copyright, meaning I'm actually building the copyright here by selecting a font and selecting a drop shadow. And I'm going to size this up dynamically by grabbing it. We can't move it di uh, dynamically, but we can size it up. Here's where we actually move its position. And we can make it more or less opaque and size it proportionally, either with the slider here, which I find a little tedious on a laptop, or we can do it physically with our hands right like that. Most important that we use a drop shadow if we're going to be going on a lighter surface but here we're on a dark background so you don't even see the need for a drop shadow. Anything you type in here will be in the copyright as you can see here I'm backspacing and removing that little uh, graphic but I'm going to command Z and put it back in. So you can put anything you want in here and if you're creating one of these for the first time, you can even select the text, go to copy, and then when it comes time to save this copyright with its location, its opacity, all of these settings get saved in with this copyright template. When you hit save, it's going to say, what do you want to call this copyright? And that's where I'm going to paste in what I selected before it actually goes all the way over here. There it goes. And now I have a preset that's listed in with all my other presets that's specific to that type of copyright. And I'm going to hit export. And by the way, um, at the end of post-processing, I always say show in Finder. And that way I can see the files I export and I can view them to check. I'm going to say export and there's the file 
and I'm just going to hit the space bar here on a Macintosh and that brings up a preview of the image and we can see my copyrights very visible there. I'm going to do this once again so you see it again. Let's pick an image that's a little more challenging. Um, here's an interesting one here. Let's use this one. I go to export. It brings up the same dialog we saw before. And if I go down here to watermark, I know that this watermark that we just used isn't going to work on this image. I'm going to go back down to edit watermarks and here we can see that the watermark that we just used before on the dark image has a little harder time being uh, um, read here so we need to change its position or change its size or its opacity or all of the above. In this case um, because this watermark has a drop shadow it becomes a little bit more visible against complicated areas but let's move it to the center of the image we can do it automatically by just clicking the anchor point here and I'm going to add opacity and size if you're curious about these by the way when you're learning a new interface click on everything and see what it does now that's way too big so I'm gonna to go to proportional and just choose a proportion and an opacity that I think is appropriate. And now that I have changed an existing copyright that I had in my presets, I want to name it differently. So we can either update the existing one to reflect these changes, but I think it's smarter to save current settings as a new preset. So we're going to create a new preset. And I still have the information copied from the last time, so all I have to do is hit paste but it says this name is already in use so we'll just call it um, maybe we'll call it centered to get out of this dialog first say done here and now we're back to uh, the export dialog and we just need to choose the one that we just made which is centered it'll always be automatically chosen for us but it's good to just check and hit export and I'm going to use the spacebar again to bring up a quick preview of that image. And there's the visible copyright. It looks a little bit tough, so you'd have to decide whether you wanted to go back and redo that with a little bit uh, more intensity or more opacity on the copyright. But that's basically how it's done, and it's what I wanted to show you. And now if you upload that image to social media, um, it would be visibly uh, attributed back to you. Thank you for watching my tutorial and I'd like to invite you to visit my life at davidjulian.com where I have my portfolios, galleries, and links to a lot of other things. And in addition to that, um, I also teach workshops. I do private instruction via Skype. I offer mentoring and portfolio development. And you can find me on Facebook at David Julian Photographic Arts. Or if you just put in David Julian, there'll be half a dozen of us, but you'll also see me pop up there. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much for, uh, for sitting with us, and, and I uh, hope you enjoy your work with uh, Photoshop and Lightroom.